Welcome to a serene scene in Belfast for this uh, 1999 World Cross Country Championships. Very little wind, no overnight rain, conditions good, a little heavy underfoot, but that's cross country. And first, we join the closing stages of the junior women's race. Course of just over 6,000 meters, and the leader, Kadani, 18 years old, a bronze medalist of uh, last year, but now on her way to gold. Undoubtedly, she's got a big gap now from the first of the Kenyans, Chariot. Chariot, only 14, by the way. And the British uh, team, Walsh was 44th in the last lap. Kelly, 62nd, Ward, 70th, Colmer, 82, Partridge, 83. Kidani's only 18, but certainly, Brendan, the Ethiopians on their way to individual gold and probably the team gold. Certainly looks that way with four in eight. The Kenyan team led very early on, but now the only Kenyan who's managed to survive the course in a decent position we're looking at there was Chariot in, in second place. But the way the leader has been skipping over this very soft ground, making it a very impressive performance overall. But it tells us that late, later in the afternoon, there's going to be some tired athletes out there because these conditions are getting very, very soft. Really is uh, a bit more of a cross country course than we normally get. Compared uh, last year, for instance, with Mar Marrakesh in Morocco, which was really a very flat track. Well, it certainly was, but this is what they call true cross country running. And this athlete looks very, very impressive overall. You can see she's lapped one of the tail enders over a six kilometer course, which tells you the difference in standard between the Ethiopians, the Kenyans, and some of the European countries. But there's Chariot, number 303, tiny athlete, very young athlete too, and number 250, the other Ethiopian in third place. Kidani, almost within sight of the finish now. And an easy winner. The bronze medalist of a year ago becomes the gold medalist in 99. Workness Kidani comes home to take gold for Ethiopia. And they're surely on their way to the team gold as well. In second place, 14 years old, Chariot, the Kenyan. Kadogo in Kenya, or Swahili means small. Fujinaga of Japan in third place. Fourth is uh, Sedalil of Ethiopia, and Ethiopia packing them in, and certainly Brendan going to win the team title. Certainly looks the case. Some of the Kenyans now rallying after a very early start for the Ethiopian team. Look assured of individual gold and team gold. Racing confirmed, Gidani, Ethiopia, the gold medalist, Chariot, Kenya in second place, Fujinaga, Japan in third, Sedal in, in fourth. The Ethiopians have got uh, their scoring four in the first nine and take the team title. Ethiopia confirmed as the winners of the World Championship in the junior women's race. Only 20 points. Kenya in second place and Japan third. The men's short race underway. 
this, a race of uh, just over 4,000 uh, metres. And the British team, Julian Morehouse of Birchfield, Philip Tolber, Basingstoke, Michael Openshaw, Chester Le Street, Spencer Barden of Belgrave, David Heath, Blackheath, and Sammy uh, Ohian of Hounslow. Brendan. Well, this race was only instituted last year for the first time, the short course cross country race won by John Kibbo of Kenya. And really, when the athletes of this caliber get together in a race of this nature, then the, the start of this race is incredibly quick. To run four kilometers, some of the best distance runners in the world, particularly that team of the Kenyans, all six of them already in the, in the lead. All six of those Kenyans been away training together in their training camp. Up in, the, up in the hills, outside of Nairobi. They train extremely hard together, and they came here full of confidence for this four kilometer race. Well, in that list, believe it or not, those six, Koskai, Kachara, Limo, Koskai, Koskai, and Rarimo, that's the Kenyan team, the first six in this race, and they're actually the same list as we have in front of us for the whole of the Kenyan team. Two steeplechasers, John Koskai, who won the Commonwealth Games, Paul Koskai, the world junior steeplechase record holder, those two I think will figure largely in the later stages of this race. Well, they've made a statement of intent there. Six run in each team, the first four home count. And the Kenyans filling the first six positions. Basically, they've come here, they've trained well, they've all trained together, and we'll see the rest of the Kenyan athletes tomorrow in the longer race. The fact that there's two races really means there's two events for Kenyans to win more gold medals in. But basically, this Kenyan team, Billion Walde is the one Ethiopian in that group just moving through there, gently on the inside and quietly moving through, working his way to, to the lead. Because when you look at the first kilometer time, which will be coming up soon, I think we'll find that the first kilometer in this race is probably the fastest of the whole race. 2.44 for the first kilometer. Well, that's incredible. That's that's the kind of speed on the, the distance runners run at 3,000 meters, 5,000 meters on the track. And here, we're, here they're doing it over muddy fields, undulating patches, and a, with a field of this of this size. It's incredible, actually. Just so just shows you that really now the race needs to settle down because they can't keep going at that pace. Actually, it's a real test of both speed and stamina. This is an undulating course, soft in patches. That's underlined by that shot. <laughs> so now, into the second half of the race, and the Kenyans have already done the damage. They've gone out very quickly. But now settled down, now the serious racing will commence. 2.44 for the first kilometer means that all of these athletes are going to be suffering a little in the later stages. Now who's got the strength and who can react best on this surface? I can see Million Walde and McConnan, the two Ethiopians. Number 93 there, El Himur, the Frenchman who was favored, Moroccan born athlete who now lives and runs for France and he's on terms with those, with those Kenyans as they go down the far side of the course where the underfoot surface turns from very soft to here on this finishing straight which is quite firm and quite solid quite good for running on going into the uh, second and final lap each lap about 1900 metres Limo still the leader only began uh, running seriously a couple of years ago made a tremendous impact already on the international scene well a sharp incline there but now the serious contenders are settling together million walde who won the durham cross country recently and who we saw setting the pace when Haile gabri selassie broke the indoor world record for 5,000 meters that's number 70 on the inside and his teammate McConnan, who stepped up from the junior race to run here, he's also in contention. As we're looking down the field, the two Moroccans there, another one of the Kenyan athletes, and we're allowing this Shadrach Hoff, number 195, the South African athlete, 
and then you can see the Mark Carroll of Ireland, and then you can see the European athletes beginning to come through. But certainly, uh, the Kenyans at the moment leading the team race. The Ethiopians now in the third and fourth places. That's Benjamin Limo leading from Paul Koskai. The two of them just pulling slightly ahead. Million Walde, who that gap has really begun to open up behind behind Million Walde. McConnell, who's working very hard to try and close down on his teammate. But these two Kenyans, they've ruined the race in terms of tactics because they just blew it away in the first thousand meters or so. But there they are together, Limo and Koskai, the steeplechaser against the athlete who probably became favorite amongst the Kenyans in the training camp recently. But Million Walde there in third place. We've seen him win at Durham, cross country earlier in the year, and he's got an extremely fast finish. working hard together, but obviously they'll be extremely competitive. Koskai following through there on the outside, looking over his shoulder, sees there's no danger coming from Walde at the moment, and really now the race between the two Kenyans. Benjamin Limo, Koskai number 150, the steeplechase junior. He actually won the Kenyan trials as we watch Million Walde coming through, and then McConnen, the other Kenyan, but I think Walde is going to do no better than third, and maybe he's going to have to hold off his teammate who's in fourth place because the two Kenyans have bolted on that really hard part of the course. And now he though senses victory. Limo putting his head down, working hard, and beginning to grow away from the, his teammate. And Limo within sight of the finish now sprints away to become the world of short race cross country champion. Limo wins it. First guy in second place. McConan comes through for third from Volde of Ethiopia. Uh, the Kenyans have now got four in the first seven and certainly win the team race. The individual race and the team race won by the Kenyans. Another incredible display of distance running. What a race that was, what a performance that was. And there's the winner being helped away. I don't think he needs it, but that's Benjamin Limo, the Kenyan winner of the men's short race. The race has only been held twice. Both times won by Kenyans. Well, the Kenyans one and two, Limo won it, Costco in second place, McCona and Ethiopia third, Valde Ethiopia fourth, and the Kenyans there. In fact, a pack four, they're scoring four in the first six. A check on the result. The Kenyans won, Morocco second, Ethiopia third, and Great Britain in sixth place. countdown now the final 20 seconds 66 nations in this world cross-country championship the women's long course title race and the start is going to be fast it's flat it's inviting but there's a funnel They've got 460 meters before they go out on the first of four laps they face. So that leads them on, but it comes down now to a funnel. And they've got to find a good position right from the start. 
Well, that's what makes this a particularly difficult race because normal distance races, the athletes start fairly steady and then build up the pace. The World Cross Country Championships, when you've got a field of this size on a course as you've just described, David, then the idea is to run a little bit faster than you would normally run in a distance race, but you have to do that to establish a position. And I think sensibly there, as I'm looking at this, Paula Ratcliffe just, just found the decent position in about 12th place, just off the back, she hasn't gone too quickly, and she knows well that really the idea is to just get settled into your running as early as possible and ignore some of the rushes that happen in the early stages of this race. I think Paula Radcliffe is conscious that she's going to have to do something about this. She really is working hard on the soft part of the course, and I think she realizes that she's got a chance to actually press the pace and maybe encourage one or two of the other athletes to help her with that. You can see the pace beginning to pick up now. They're working hard up the hill, and there's Gita Wami just pressing on, just moving on, moving smoothly into the lead. And this is what I thought Paula Radcliffe might want to do, but Gita Wami has stolen the initiative as she leads, and very quickly that group has blown apart. So the idea that somebody had to inject the pace has been taken up by Gita Wami, the favorite. Well, that was needed. Suit Radcliffe, because uh, they're all so aware that Paula has got no sort of finish at all, not a very fast finisher. She's got to break it up, and I think in the main, they would, well, suspect, and rightly so, that she'll have to take it on. I think they know enough about her, and I think she's happy to do that. She was, they gave her a chance. She actually then got a group, the group whittled down a little, but, but slowed quickly, and then it concertina it again, and now Paula Radcliffe putting her cards on the table. She knows if she's going to win this race, it would be have to, she'd have to make it a test of strength. She's actually doing that. She's waited long enough, and now Paula Radcliffe is encouraging one of the two of the other athletes to go alongside her. And you can see the conditions here, and these are the conditions where Paula Radcliffe's strength could tell. So really now, it's up to Paula to try and make the race and try to hurt these other athletes. Radcliffe looking very, very relaxed. At, uh, head nod, not quite as pronounced as it becomes in the later stages. Three Ethiopians, then two Kenyans, and then Paula Radcliffe. The Ethiopians with their scoring four in the top nine places. Four six one is Wami alongside of Den Doba. Doba is wearing four six zero. Little bit surprised that on this lap. Nobody's really tried to break up the group. group. British placings behind Radcliffe are 44th Talbot, 45 Mudge, 49 Krasvicki, 55 Wright, 59 Dagnay. Well, I think Paula Radcliffe has run well there to get into this position now. She's worked hard. Pace was being injected in parts, but not consistently. I think Wami number 461 looks smooth on the course, on the conditions, but now Paula Radcliffe there's no more honest distance runner than Paula Radcliffe. She always gives 100%, no matter how fit or otherwise she is, she'll always give 100%. And now, as you can always expect and always trust from Paula Radcliffe, you get a run for your money. But Paula, working hard there, she knows the best route around this course is away from the inside, and she's taking the easier route there. But this is a tough race for Paula Radcliffe on her own against Africa. There's Wami, round the corner, leans onto the inside, knows the conditions are not a problem for her, but she's got another card in her, in her pack. She's actually got a great finish as Gita Wami. And now Paula Radcliffe coming under a little bit of pressure, but you know Paula won't give up until she crosses the line. She'll put everything into this race, but Wami looks strong at this point. The other Ethiopian, Werku, Dendoba, so the Ethiopians are featuring well here. So there's three Ethiopians, one Kenyan, and then Paula Radcliffe. 
certainly in the team event. First four score from the six uh, runners of each nation is allowed. And the uh, Ethiopians, a very, very strong position at the moment. They've got four in ten. You were saying, David, that you expected Paula Radcliffe to do something on this lap. Well, I agree with you, but I didn't expect Itawami to strike out so early. I don't, don't think she really needs to, unless she's just feeling so good and so strong that she's not having a problem at all. I think that's the truth of it. She's looking good and obviously feeling good. And she's not having to do a lot to get away from the rest. Got about uh, 15 to 20 meters. 518 is Chep Kimai, the Kenyan. 459, Ethiopian and Woku, former world judo 5,000 meter champion. And uh, Radcliffe's finding this hard. And they're making sure it's hard for her. Well, there's Gito Wami, and there you can look and see the gap that Gito Wami has over Paula Radcliffe. We saw Gito Wami win the Durham Cross Country earlier in the year. She wasn't in as good a form then, winning that race as she is today, but she's flowing smoothly, she's running strong, and look at she's not even working hard. This is distance running at its very, very best. So let's not underestimate the performance of Paula Radcliffe, who's run great here today, second place so far. With a little bit of a threat from Dendoba behind her, but Paula Radcliffe won't give up that silver medal without a battle. Radcliffe uh, really digging into the ground. Warmy by comparison, floating over it. That's Warku, fourth place. 518 is uh, Chep Kamai, the Kenyan. I wonder what the summer holds for Gita Wami on the track. The World Championships later in the year in Seville. 10,000 meters will be her target. The World Cross Country Champion Championship, a great race to lead into the summer. And Paula Radcliffe, what a great effort she's made here today. She's taken on all the best distance runners in the world, including those six or seven top African athletes, which is only one of them been found to be better than Paula today. Wami was always going to be the uh, main source of trouble for Radcliffe, and Wami now within sight of the finish. First in 96 in this World Championship, third for the past two years, and now becomes the World Cross Country Champion once again. Wami of Ethiopia takes the gold, and now the battle on for silver. And being roared home with the race on, Radcliffe loses the silver to Dendoba. Dendoba, the Ethiopian, takes the silver. Radcliffe, the bronze. Then Warku. Kep Kabai, the Kenyan. And the Kenyans are uh, packing him well, but the Ethiopians, I see Godo coming through, the Ethiopians look as if they may have the team race stitch. They're looking for the fourth counter. Well, there. Ito Wami, the winner, who we'll be seeing in a few weeks' time, running at Balmoral. And there, 5-1-5, Malot, and there the American champion crossing the line. Well, Paula Radcliffe, I think, maybe a little bit disappointed, getting caught in the finishing stages, losing the silver medal, but it becoming a bronze medal. But really, I hope the disappointment only lasts for a few hours because that was a fantastic performance by Paula Radcliffe. Another medal, third year in a row, she's got a medal in the World Cross Country Championships, and that's great. Feel well strung out, and by the way, unofficially, I think, Brendan, that was the biggest winning margin, 13 seconds, since Christensen of Norway won in 88. There are the placings. Actually, it's 12 seconds, but still, it's a considerable margin. And Doba takes the silver, Ethiopia gold and silver. Paula Radcliffe follows two silvers now with a bronze. Woku, the third Ethiopian home. And actually the Kenyans packing in well there. They've got uh, fifth, sixth and seventh. So it's going to be close in the team race between the Ethiopians and the Kenyans.
back on the uh, one, two, three. And the women's senior race, Ethiopia, the gold medalist, Kenya in second place, Portugal third, Great Britain in seventh place. There you can see it absolutely. They'll be churning their way through the mud. Some athletes actually really enjoy running on surfaces like that, believe it or not. But some of the really class athletes do find it difficult. And there you can see as they run along the side of the hill on the camber, we, the athletes will be sliding away from the, the central point there. And the conditions underfoot really are very, very difficult. Well, we can see exactly how difficult they are uh, by looking at the closing stages of the junior men's race, which finished a few minutes ago, dominated by the Africans once more. We haven't found any conditions that they can't perform in these days. They've actually taken over the sport and in many, many extents, it's what they want to do with it in the future. But McConan, that bronze medal already in his kit bag, take back to uh, Ethiopia, but can he turn last year's silver medal, which he won in the junior championships, into a gold medal this time? So the silver medal is McConan, looking very aware of the athletes around him, having not too many problems with these really awful conditions, but there McConan just steps ahead almost for the first time with any serious intent just stretching them along he knows limo's ready he knows he's going to make a counter-attack but i think he's poised there exactly where he would want to be i think he's just testing the kenyans there but it really is uh, sticky the kenyans looking for the better ground there's not much of that around it really was a terrific downpour early this morning and uh, throughout the morning really and now that's uh, stopped, leaving the course so boggy. But in fact, there is a strong and bitterly cold wind blowing, biting across the course. Well, I'm impressed with the way McConan just keeping an eye on everything that's going along. He now seems as though he's determined to win this race. And as he looked inside and outside, he saw the two challenges there. And he's approaching the finishing straight, beginning his sprint already. Yes, and McConan seems to me to have timed it right. He's within sight of the finish now, and McConan goes away to add the gold medal to the uh, bronze he won yesterday. This, the new junior cross-country champion of the world. McConan, only 18 or 19, takes gold for Ethiopia. Limo in second place, Mitai of Kenya third, Abeti, Ethiopia in fourth place, and just behind, you can see the two Kenyans coming through. Jep Karui is there, and also... Uh, Kita, and the Kenyans win the team race undoubtedly with four in the first six. This is the Women's Short Course Championship of the world. Away they go, just over 4,000 metres of course. There's uh, 460 metres to go before they uh, set out on the first of two big laps. The start wide open, invites uh, a fast start really, but uh, it narrows down to a funnel after about, uh, what, 30, 40 seconds. And already Ethiopians having enjoyed victories already this afternoon. The Ethiopians are well to the fore here in this race. But I've got to say these conditions today are savage. And the organizing committee here, they've done a brilliant job keeping everything together. They've got a very, very good crowd considering the awful conditions, considering the fact that two of Ireland's leading distance runners who were expected to take part in these championships, Sonia O'Sullivan and Katrina McKeon, who weren't able to be here. But you can imagine what it would have been like if they had them two here, plus uh, a decent weather conditions. But so overall, the crowd have really supported these championships, which have been very well staged in every, in every sense. The Ethiopians, the Kenyan women, the early rush now. You can sense they're beginning to settle. 
but really the idea in a race like this over four kilometers find the good position work to the good position and then basically settle down and try and conserve some of the energy because you don't want to be going too quickly too soon well look at the ethiopian green vest they're really having a blistering world championship all their athletes have arrived here in top form and they now go out on the first of two big laps each lap is uh, about 1900 meters long her husband uh, go out shortly in the men's long course championship and Naya Riki, bronze medalist two years ago and helped the Kenyans to the team gold and alongside the Commonwealth Games 1500 meter champion Jacqueline Moranga is the world junior 1500 meter champion Duletcher of Kenya so the two 1500 meter runners obviously finding the pace much to their liking in the early stages but poised there in number fourth oh and that was a real slip from uh, that was the favourite, Anita Wyman almost went over there, but actually managed to hold herself together. That's a very difficult part of the course. You see some of the athletes are sliding down the hill. It's really getting difficult out there. Obviously, the idea is to conserve a position, but really, when those sort of conditions, you've got to be very conservative around, running around there. And look at that mud. I mean, that is awful. Some athletes actually, believe it or not, enjoy running through in conditions like that. I'm looking forward to the men's race later on because John Brown, I know, enjoys these sort of conditions as we watch the two 1500 meter runners from Ethiopia and Kenya lead about five meters or so ahead of the European, one of the European favorites, Anita Wyman. That's a very awkward camber that we saw Barman slip on. The athletes, Brendan, wearing as long a spikes as they possibly can. They'll have gone to every sports shop in Belfast when they saw the conditions here. And Anita Wyman, the coach was telling us that uh, when she looked at the weather forecast earlier in the week and she saw the big black cloud over Belfast predicting it was going to be very wet conditions, she was actually delighted about the conditions. I don't think she's all that comfortable at the moment. That nasty slip that she took on the side of that hill really seems to have jarred her and held her back. As once again, we get used to the sight. Two Kenyans and one Ethiopian, and then the first European, Anita Wyman. Actually, Wyman slipped there as Costa ground, there's no question about that, but also the officials now have moved some of the stakes out of there so that uh, the athletes won't actually fall against the uh, stakes holding the, the netting. This isn't the point where she slipped, but uh, we'll see them later on as they approach that point. in second place. We've not seen much of this athlete previously in Bagua. She's 27 or 28. Spends a lot of time in America, apparently. A Sandel Lab, number 56. Former world champion herself. And we're looking there at Anita Wyman, really the pre-race favorite. She's having a terrible time out here. She's really uncomfortable in these conditions. She's moving from side to side try to find some better running conditions and there aren't any so really you've got to do what Jacqueline Moranga is doing and just plow straight through it there Moranga went to the outside looked for a little bit of better going wasn't able to find it so came back on the inside and just settled down on the inside there getting great support from her teammate the four kilometer race well underway now and Jacqueline Moranga running smoothly I'll tell you what the teammates not going badly But what a good crowd for a day like this. It certainly is, and the athletes will appreciate it. They'll all know that when they get to the, that next field, which is on a very slight camber, they had difficulty with it last time round. They're going to have more difficulty with it this time round. But these four athletes in contention for the, for the other medal because it looks as though Jacqueline Moranga is running away with this one. A teammate in second place running well. First time we've seen her around Bugua. 
and then Belgian chairman of France, Anna-Marie Sandel, and those three are going to be battling out for the minor medals. This is the hard part of the course. There's Maranga. She didn't have a problem at all with it, but I think we'll see some of the other athletes will have some difficulty going around that. It's very, really difficult there. You've got to keep tight on the corner, but also if you lose your footing, as we saw Wyman do, then it really can upset you for later in the race. And she doesn't seem to be working too hard, but she's still going away from the rest. It's going to be quite a good race for second and third, uh, for the second place, and the silver medal with between Sandel and Belkasan. Well, we saw Maranga run the Durham Cross Country, where she finished second behind Gita Wami, who won the eight-kilometre race yesterday. So obviously the form guy was pretty good on Maranga, who's really been able to st step between 1500 metre running and cross country running as we watch Belka Chem and Anna-Marie Sandel battling it out for the silver medal now. Anna-Marie Sandel has closed down on Belka Chem and really senses that they're definitely both going to get medals, but Sandel thinks she can probably do better than bronze. And there Maranga enjoying the support of the crowd as she comes along the finishing straight. The Commonwealth 1500 meter champion, safe and secure in first place as we watch the battle for second. So Maranga comes home to win the World Championship Women's Short Course event. Commonwealth 1500 meter champion takes gold now in this World Championship. The race on for second place and Belka Sam is just about doing it but Sandel closing. And Belka Sam holds on to take the silver for France, Sandel after 22nd place yesterday in the long distance race uh, takes the bronze from Finland and then Kathy Butler from Canada coming through with a strong run there running extremely well in the later stages and then another one of the Ethiopian athletes number 52 Bekele we're looking now for the first Britain Amy Waterloo who was in 16th place just looking down the finishing straight now I can see Amy Waterloo that's a great performance from Amy Waterloo to lead the British team home running through strongly there Amy Waterloo extremely well the Sail Harrier member of the Sail Manchester Club she stuck to it well worked her way through the field and it's paid off so team event still wide open the Ethiopians seem to pack in quite well the Kenyans was a bit, bit split but the winner, Moranga, the Kenyan. In second place, Belkashem of France, and third, Sandel of Finland. They're the winner, Jacqueline Maranga, the Commonwealth Games 1500 meter champion, now the world short race champion. Elka Chem, France in second place, Anna Marie Sandel, Finland in third, Kathy Butler, the Canadian coming through strongly in the later stages, head of Joseph, and then the second Ethiopian, Bekele, and the Kenyan, Teresa Mbugua, who was leading in the early stages happen to finish in second place amongst the Kenyan team. We're looking down the list to see if we can see the team place, but there, that's an excellent performance in 15th place by Amy Waterloo of Sale Harriers, leading the British women's team, who I think have done very well in the team race. Well, there are the official placings. The French have taken the team gold medal, Ethiopia second, Morocco third, the Kenyans in fourth place, and Great Britain sixth. Sixty-six nations lined up for the men's long course championship. The race won by the Kenyan Paul Turgat for the last four years, and he's here to defend the title. Turgat wearing number 670. The British team, Glenn Trowens of Coventry, Chris uh, Stevenson of Cardiff, Keith Cullen, Charlesford, Andy Pearson of Bingley, Dominic Bannister of Shaftesbury, and John Brown of Sheffield, the British number one.
Well, when we saw John Brown win the European Cross Country Championship in Belgium a couple of years ago, the conditions were very, very similar to what they are here today. John reveled in the mud in that day, winning his biggest title in the European Cross Country Championship. John moved well there at the start, just on the outside of the group, got himself in a nice position. So um, hopefully, John Brown will attempt to take on the strength of Kenya and Ethiopia. And we're looking for John, as John told us the other day, he's looking for a top 10 position. And he's set off there, and you can see him in the white vest and blue shorts in about fifth or sixth place, moving well into that position. There's John Brown just behind the two Kenyans. There he is there, just behind those two Kenyans. I think you'll see a few more Kenyans by the course of the afternoon's finished. But uh, that's a good start from John Brown. And this, uh, they've got a start of 460 metres, and they're passing the finishing line now. And then they've got five long laps to go. The race over 12 kilometres, five long laps of uh, 2,308 metres still to go. There's the part of the course that we saw some of the women having difficulty with, and you can see exactly the same. Some of the men take them a little bit by surprise there, but really the idea is try and hold the inside line or move way on the outside, give yourself a little bit of a chance. So the, the obvious tactics there, one of the Kenyans is going to set the pace. They do that really well, and then the rest of them are going to be towed along behind them. You have to train very, very hard to be fit enough to run against these men. But also, once you come to the race in your best condition, you have to be brave enough to take them on competitively. And there's Paolo Guerra, so there's two Europeans in the first 10 there, as well as Mohamed Morit, who's running for Belgium, but actually was born in Morocco. So the whole of this race being dominated by the Kenyans, the first one, John Brown, running really well so far. John Brown, that economical action, well suited to this sort of going. Moore hit the Belgium, born in Morocco, just behind Brown. Guerra, though, is the leading European, twice the European cross country champion. And Guerra has now joined the Africans. Well, it's a brave effort by Paulo Guerra, who really was beginning to develop as one of Europe's top distance runners. And here he is, literally mixing it with the Kenyans, getting in amongst them. They'll know he's there. They won't be too worried because the big boys, as far as I'm concerned in this race, Paul Turgat and Paul Koech, those two, are. they haven't gone anywhere near the front yet. They're not bothered at all. There's Koech just sliding down the, around the corner there. Three in a line. Paolo Guerra hanging on there. The Kenyan team here, real surprises. Koech has dropped out of contention, Nairiki's dropped out of contention, and only the pre race favourite four times win winner is able to compete here today for these young up and coming Kenyans but there's the, there's the uh, the first three Kenyans and there's the fourth one running alongside um, Paulo Guerra of Portugal and there Paul Koech many people were saying that Koech was ready to beat um, Turga today but it doesn't look as though that's going to happen to my liking actually Koech is only fifth of the uh, Kenyans at the moment Chase Turgat all the way in the much drier conditions in Morocco. Very fast ground indeed. Very dry. Temperature in the 90s. But uh, he's not finding this uh, very easy, Koet. And there's Turgat hitting the front after 18 minutes of running. He's probably got, he's probably got about another 20 minutes of running to, ahead of him, and he's hitting the front very, very early. 
I think he'll be a bit surprised because I know he was conscious of the how well that Kovic was running and then suddenly Paul Turgat, the four times individual champion, decides, right, I'm going to make it all my own way, I'm going to do it all myself. Boo, one of uh, two uh, brothers who are running in the Ethiopian team, both extremely useful. Masikibu is the leading Ethiopian at the moment, is the youngest, he's only 20. Well, Paul Turgat approaching two laps to go, settling down a little, just watching his teammate come alongside him, just taking his foot off the pedal, relaxing in the lead. Difficult to be able to imagine that on these sort of conditions in this sort of race but well, there's a lot of hard running behind him but his teammate is encouraged by the fact that he's he's slowed down as we watch the europeans getting a big cheer from this enthusiastic crowd here in Ireland, they've done extremely well to turn out the numbers they have especially in the conditions we have here well i'm very impressed with ivuti this youngster who's done uh, Pretty well in the World Junior Cross Country Championships before the last two runnings. He was uh, ninth in 96, sixth in 97. Uh, Guaira coming through in fourth place. That's uh, fifth, Ruto. Two Kenyans out in front of me. Interesting to see how Guerra is getting on in third place. He is, yes. The European now moves into third place. Chalanga is fourth, the Kenyan. If we uh, watch them come through, I think Ruto should be fifth. And John Brown still back in about eighth or ninth. And now Paul Turgat stretching, beginning to go to see if he can make this that famous fifth victory. Well, this is the breaking point now. And Evuti knows it too. Turgat is setting his stall out and showing just what he can do. On good ground now, the finish almost in sight. And Turgat comes away, an imposing figure, dominant. And coming home to win the World Cross Country Championship for the fifth time in succession. And that is an all-time record. Ibuti finishes in second place. A great run by the 20-year-old. And now in third place, Guerra. Good run by the Portuguese. And he celebrates, and rightly so. The last time a European placed in the top three was Tim Hutchins of Great Britain back in 89. So the Europeans back. 6 7 1 Jalanga. He's in fourth place. The third Kenyan, the first four Kenyans home count in the team race. Jalanga, 6 7 1, is fourth. 6 6 7 is Ruto. He's the uh, fifth place man and the last Kenyan scorer. They've won the team race clearly with four in the first five. A bit of a gap now. And now the crowd are waiting because previously John Brown was in the next group. But there's Paul Koech just coming into the finishing straight. And now John Brown battling out with Mohamed Murray. Well, John will get some tremendous cheers as he comes into the finishing straight. So Koech here is in sixth place. And we're looking behind Koech, coming into the finishing straight. We expect to see John Brown in seventh place with Mohamed Marit just behind him. Well, John's target was the top ten. It was an ambitious target, but it looks as though John's actually achieved that. He's going in for seventh place. Morit tracking him. Born in Morocco, now running for Belgium. And uh, Morit feels he can take John Brown on, I think. But Brown's resisting very strongly indeed, but Morit finishes in seventh place and Brown is eighth. Jafar, Ethiopia in ninth place. 
And Castro, the other Portuguese, the veteran Portuguese, in fact, has come through for 10th place. So three Europeans, Brendan, in the top 10. Well, actually, that's been a bit of a turnaround. The Africans dominant in the team race, first and second in the race, Mezzi Gabu finishing there. But the Europeans, John Brown, Paulo Guerra, Mohamed Morit, and then Castro, great performances. And I think a little bit of a turnaround for European distance running in the World Cross Country Championships. I must say the Portuguese are packing well as well, but there's no doubt at all that the Kenyans have not just taken the individual gold medals from Paul Turgart, that's uh, Johansson, the Dane, former European champion. There's no doubt the Kenyans have taken uh, the uh, gold medal in the team event, and Paul Turgat retains the world title for the fifth year in succession. Paul Turgat, his fifth successful title, and Paul Turgat now becomes the most successful distance runner in the history of the World Cross Country Championships, bringing his total of medals to 12 gold medals, five individual and seven team medals. The young Ibuti, his teammate, ran very well in second place, and a turnaround there for Paulo Guerra of Portugal in third place, leading home three other Europeans in the top ten. And so the result of the long race. In first place, the Kenyan team, led home by Paul Turgat. In second place, Ethiopia. And third, a fantastic performance by Paulo Guerra, bringing the Portuguese team into third place. This has been a wet and windy Belfast for two days of intensive cross-country racing, some of the very best we've ever seen. And the highlight, undoubtedly, Paul Turgat with his fifth win in succession in the men's long distance cross country championship. Turgat about to mount the rostrum as we say goodbye from Belfast.